what's the most fucked up thing someone has told you about themselves after barely getting to know them, not safe for work. Temporary co-worker tells me she was kidnapped, raped, and beaten by her ex-husband, burned with cigarettes, hands shoved into garbage disposal, head beaten with a hammer. The incident resulted in a baby she somehow still has, and they're not even divorced because he won't sign the divorce papers. I work in a small town gas station. I'm trying to check out customers, and she's reciting a true crime episode to me. The conversation started with mascara recommendations. It was the craziest thing I've ever heard. Visited a coffee shop for the first time on holiday. Barista commented on my tattoos. I said thank you. She told me she's not allowed to get tattoos, but she cuts herself to enjoy the pain, and that's nearly the same thing. I found a different coffee shop for the rest of the holiday. Stuck driving a coworker out to a remote gas plant to do a system install. He was kind of fucked up, but assumed it was just socially awkward IT way. Nope. He starts telling me about him and his dad collecting Nazi memorabilia and how proud he was of his German grandparents, trying to make other small talk and he would just trail off answering questions and start singing to himself. Thought for sure I'd end up on the news and a manhunt would be conducted. Second best story, met the neighbor right after we moved in and she started telling me about them wanting another kid, but doing the deed was hard because she was overweight and had bad knees and it just made it difficult. I'm a guy who never met her and have my kids playing mere feet away, so I can't call her batshit crazy. A customer explained to me the benefits of a coffee enema to heal everything from my acne to preventing cancer. I couldn't get her to leave me alone for an hour because it was dead and no one was there to help. I worked for a skincare counter in a department store. Like if you don't need my products because cleaning your ass with coffee fixes it, why are you here? But she went on about how she started her kids on these and did their enemas until they could do theirs on their own. What? Then, she also grabbed my hands and kept saying, Promise me you'll try it. Promise me. She left after I promised. No, I didn't try it. A guy told me during our first shift that his youngest daughter was suicidal. His eldest daughter's boyfriend was terribly abusive and his wife was sleeping with someone at her work. Apparently, he'd just gotten out of jail after flying home from out of state beating the shit out of his daughter's boyfriend, his brothers, and his dad, driving to his wife's work and beating the shit out of her boyfriend, then driving to the hospital to hold his daughter's hand after she had attempted suicide until the cops arrived to arrest him for aggravated assault. Had to get my picture taken for a visa, so went to a local photography shop that took the pictures and printed them out for you right there. I had been talking to the guy as he worked on other people's photos and when I finally got my picture taken, he started opening up about his family. Apparently, his son was killed three years ago in a car accident and he was telling me how much I reminded him of his son, going to school for engineering, first generation college student, etc. The son was killed in his senior year, so didn't even get to graduate. He even showed me pictures. It was heartbreaking. To make things worse, he said he had a degenerative muscular disease and doctors had given him about two to three years before he'd be bedridden. He then went on to say his daughter was taking care of him and how she isn't married yet and deserves to live a young person's life and man, it really put into perspective how bad some people have it. I still think about that guy to this day and hope he's doing well. Hitchhiking through New Zealand I got picked up by a semi-driver, awesome guy, but an hour into the drive started unloading every bit of personal information he could. How he's cheated on his wife, screwed the company out of money, stolen items, it was like I was a priest in a confession booth. When I asked him why he told me all of that, he said it's been eating him up inside for years and telling me helped get it off of his chest. He said I had no idea who he or anyone he knew was, so it felt like I was the perfect person to unload on. Used to work at a ski resort and was working in a different area than I normally work. Well, this lady who I was working with found out I was slightly acquainted with her fiancé and proceeded to tell me all about how his family hates her and is mean to her and all about his substance abuse issues. I don't remember all the details because it was a few years ago, but she unloaded on me with every issue of her relationship and I'm like, I'm just here to work. I didn't really even know her fiancé. I avoided that lady after that. New roommate told me her current boyfriend got kicked out of college for sexual assault and was under investigation for another case of sexual assault. Wanted my opinion about it within like two hours of meeting. 
completely disregarded that my opinion was run. Started to work with my coworker. He kept falling asleep on me. On day two, I asked him if he was okay because he constantly falls asleep. He tells me he has insomnia. Makes sense. I feel bad for the guy. An hour goes by. He nods off again. This is scary because he's a driver. I yell, wake up. He jolts awake, goes back to driving, apologizes, then begins telling me what happened and why he can't sleep. About 10 years ago, he was going through a divorce. Apparently, his daughter's bedroom got broken into and she was raped and beaten nearly to death at age 15. The assailant went to the mother's bedroom and murdered her. A couple of weeks later, they found the guy while he, the father, was taking care of his daughter, shot multiple times and murdered in a random town nearby somewhere in a ditch. He goes on to say the cops arrested him right away since he was the number one suspect, questioning him about the situation to which he had no clue to what they were going on about. He had to get a lawyer and after a few days of questioning, they had to release him because they had no evidence that it was him. His voice changed when he told me this and while he said he was a friend of the family's, I wonder what happened to him. Guess we will never know, but they got nothing on me. In a more menacing voice, after a long pause, it seemed like he caught himself and turned to me and said back in his original fun guy sweet voice, but I wasn't anywhere near so I don't know how they did suspect me for it and that's why I have trouble sleeping every night for the last 10 years. I just got chills and thought to myself, holy fuck, you did it, didn't you? Yesterday, I was walking with a friend of mine after my friend left me. He started telling me benefits of nofap and his pervertness out of nowhere, like telling me how it had affected him and his life personally. He told me how he masturbated in a train, sitting with all his friends in such a way nobody noticed. Then he goes on telling me how he asked his father for help, for which his father asked him to drink buttermilk because apparently it reduces the addiction. Worked in a catalog store and sold a middle-aged lady a dictaphone after she sheepishly asked me if there was something she could use to record people without them knowing. It was weird, but who am I to judge? I just work the tills and suggest the items. However, she then decides to tell me she needs it because she's being bullied or harassed in her home. So she buys the dictaphone and I think nothing of it. On my next shift, she's back in and demanding to speak to me about the device. First words out of her mouth are, should there already be voices on it? I was kind of weirded out and surprised to hear that the device had already been used. But then she leans across the counter and suddenly begins telling me in whisper tone that she is being attacked by spirits in her home and she needs proof. She plays the dictaphone without being prompted to do so. Anyway, there's nothing ghostly on it, just some mundane household sounds and EastEnders, a British soap opera. She became quite fond of me, came in repeatedly to tell me about the ghosts, but it just seemed so crazy that within like two shifts she had unloaded all her delusions. She even asked to know where I had went after moving away. My old colleagues obviously didn't tell her. She was a harmless lady, just a bit odd. I was buying an AC at Home Depot during Black Friday sales. There were none on the shelf, so an employee was helping me get the display model. He carried it all the way to the cashier for me. I thanked him and wished him a happy holiday season. A shadow crossed his face and he looked me straight in the eye and told me he killed someone a year ago during the holidays. He ran a man over and killed him. It was ruled an accident, but he said he won't ever celebrate a holiday again because of that. Edit to add more info and answer a couple of questions. I thought the employee was fucking with me as well. I did some searching online when I got home and found the news article, and he did indeed hit and kill a man. It was a super raining evening and just starting to get dark. The person killed was heavily intoxicated and veered into the oncoming traffic. After like a few hours of meeting a new coworker at my job, one of the first things she told me was how much she hated her husband and how like twice a day she tells him how much she wants to divorce him. She also showed me a picture of her ex-husband's and laughed maniacally as she told me how she never loved him and that she just married him to spite his mom. I've met her husband. She's now with and he's super cool and makes literally 5k a month at his job so I was genuinely confused and terrified to work with her after that. I was a teenager working retail and there was a fidgety older woman I worked with. I was always very nice to her but she was just a co-worker at the end of the day. One day, she told me about her grandpa molesting her when she was young. Her parents didn't believe her so it continued until he died. 
She said she was glad he died and was happy at his funeral. I really had no clue what to say since this was out of nowhere. I just said I was really sorry it had happened. Felt really bad for her because I could tell it still really bothered her. At a work Christmas party, it was mentioned we were going to Vancouver for a meeting next month. New guy is so excited he's losing his mind. He proceeded to tell us about how they have the best massage, happy ending kind, parlors. He went on and on about how great they were last time he went. He also told us about etiquette and what to expect. He was married with three kids and all I could think of is, what kind of shit is he not telling me if he is this open about this? Lady at work started telling me about land she owned in another state that is not part of America. She then started talking about how every American is a bond to the government and your social security number is just your bond number. Wealthy people own those bonds and own you. She started naming off prices of bonds based off people's races and genders. This was all said after I simply asked her what she was doing with her long weekend coming up. I had to stay late when I was a manager as one of the female employee's parents were running late. She broke down to me about how she had been sexually abused by her best friend's father and that he had been doing it to her best friend for years. He was in jail after he did it to her as she reported him and sadly, the daughter hated her for turning in her father as she thought it was normal behavior. She had only been working there for a few weeks at this point and we had probably only worked together a handful of times, so I really didn't know her that well yet, but I think she just needed someone to know she was struggling with it and someone to tell her it wasn't her fault and what he did was wrong. Sat on an Amtrak across from a very sweet older man who within 20 minutes was telling me about the purpose of his trip to Maryland to meet his biological father, who he had discovered via 23andMe, to discuss changing his last name, which was the condition of becoming the being the sole inheritor of his father's estate and that he was feeling a little guilty about that because his three half-sisters would be excluded from their father's will because he finally had a legacy. Woof. He disembarked 20 minutes later, and I have thought about it constantly for the following four years. When I was around 10, I lived beside this weird family. The little girl was probably four or five, always clinging to me anytime we were outside. She talked incessantly and always wanted to hang out with me asking to come into my house. She annoyed me so badly, but she was really sweet and excited about everything. One day, she tells me, do you ever naked wrestle with your dad? I told her that's really weird and no, I don't even know what that means. She then tells me she and her dad and brother naked wrestle a lot. Forgive me, but I was 10. I had no idea what the fuck I was being told. I still think about that to this day. The guilt eats at me. I wish I had understood more and told someone. I also had a classmate in high school I'd give rides to and from school so she wouldn't have to make her dad do it. After we graduated, I saw her working at the mall. She then told me her dad used to molest her and she was finally able to see a therapist and work through it. When someone says these things happen more often than we realize, they're not wrong. I have had years and years of training on signs of this type of abuse and it will forever break my heart and make me so angry. It's unfathomable.